What's up, Trade Hackers? Welcome to today's update. Today is Wednesday, March 25th. Starting off with the Trade Hacker question of the day, I have several inverted positions. What is the optimal way to manage inverted trades? All right, so let's talk about this. I'm going to pull up the platform to kind of give an example of this. And for those of you who don't know what an inverted position is, let's start with that. So I've, I've got a chart of, of the S&P up here. So typically when we sell premium, let's just say we sell a strangle. So we're going to sell a call above the current price. So let's say we sold a call up here at about 2800 and we sold a put down here below price. Let's just call it 2100 so we're we're strangling the current price, right? And our calls are higher than our puts. Well, let's say that the, the S&P just continued to rip higher. Well, one thing that we do as an adjustment technique is we roll the untested side closer to price. So as price kind of goes up and starts to test our call, in this case, we would roll the untested side up. So we take our puts and we'd roll those closer to the current price. And by doing that, we're collecting a credit, we're not using any more capital, and we're reducing our overall delta or directional exposure. So that's that's why we do it. Now, let's say that, we, that price just continued to go up, it tested our call, and then we rolled our puts up, and then it continued to go higher, so we needed to roll our puts up again. And so what we're going to do is if we have to continue to roll up those puts, if we have a very long extended move, then what happens is we become inverted. So if our initial calls are right here, we leave those alone, but we keep rolling up the puts, rolling up the puts, rolling up the puts. So then let's say our puts are at 3000 and our calls are at 2800. So the, the puts are higher than the calls or the calls are lower than the puts. And that's what we call inverted. So the question is, what's the optimal way to manage that? A couple things. What we like to do is as we get down to around a few weeks left to expiration, then we like to roll that entire spread out to the next cycle. So let's say we are in April right now. And at the end of this week, we'll be down to about 21 days to expiration. So if we have an inverted position, we would roll that from April out to May. And by doing that, again, we're collecting a credit, we're reducing our overall delta, we're reducing our gamma, which is the, the P&L swings that we might see in that trade. And we would do that, and we would, if we were inverted at that point, we would roll that trade as an inverted strangle. Okay, so that's what we do, and we'll continue to collect credit that way. Now, that's how we do it, and, and that's our preference, and based on our account size and managing the trades, and we stay small enough so that we can do that and manage through positions back to a point where we collect enough credits so that when we buy the trade back, we end up booking a profit on the trade. So that's what we like to do. Now, if you have a smaller account, you may not want to go that far. You know, we will we'll roll positions for an extended period of time to get back to profitability. But if you have a smaller account, you may want to exit before you have to go inverted. You know, you may roll up a couple times until you get into like a, a straddle situation. But then you might say, okay, I'm not going to roll out to the next expiration. I'm not going to try to keep this dream alive. I'm just going to take the loss and then be able to re redeploy that capital into other trades. That's fine too. But to answer the question about inversions, the, the optimal way to do it, and what we've found over time is that continuing to roll up or down the untested side, and then even if you get inverted, we can roll that inverted strangle out to the next cycle, continue to collect credits until we get to a point where you know the market kind of stops trending in one direction and starts you know kind of going going sideways, and that's when we can we can start to collect those profits back very quickly. Remember. I know in a situation where a market's going in one direction for a long time, I mean, it's only been a few weeks, but you know, this thing seems like it's just been going down forever. You can almost feel like it's going to go down forever, but that's not the case. Eventually, things will settle down. They'll start to trade sideways or reverse, and that's why you're just playing the cyclicality of the market. So hopefully that helps. Let's jump into the markets today and check out what's happening. First of all, Early, early this morning, we got news that the stimulus package had been agreed upon by Congress and will be signed by the president today. So what does that mean? Well, 
They were pretty vague, and I couldn't find any real details about what's actually in this stimulus bill. I'm sure it'll come out after it's signed and kind of goes through, but essentially all they're saying is, you know, there's $1,200 for for individuals who make under $75,000 a year, $500 per child, and then there's billions and billions of dollars going to different industries. One main one being the airlines, another chunk of some billions of dollars being avail- made available to the SBA, the Small Business Association for loans. And so that's the, I guess, the high level overview of what that stimulus package was. So Yesterday, the S&P was up about 11%. It was the largest one-day move in the Dow, anyway. It was the largest one-day move in the Dow since 1933. So had to go back a ways to find that one. And that was in anticipation of them passing that stimulus package. Now, today, when it came out, overnight, the futures were pretty back and forth. I mean, they, they there definitely wasn't a decision of, oh, the market really loves this thing or the market hates it. And they're just kind of bouncing around. And then throughout the day, the market has grinded higher. So S&P's up 4%, NASDAQ up 5 a NASDAQ kind of trailing the pack, only up uh, about a percent and a half, and the Russell up 2.5%. So that would say, okay, you know, from that basis, it would say, okay, yeah, the market like this. Uh, obviously, a lot of money coming in, a lot of help to companies, a lot of help to individuals. And so the market likes that. Now, do I think we are out of the woods yet? No, I do not. Do I think we're in the clear? No, I do not. I think that we are still going to see future lows in the market. And I look at this as a shorting opportunity. And so, you know, we did a little bit yesterday. We did not add any new short positions today. However, and I hope I'm not too late here, but tomorrow, if if we're up again, we'll definitely be adding some shorts to our portfolio. After this huge downswing, I mean, we were actually pretty... Not pretty, but we we actually had some long delta in this area. So this little bounce has really helped from that perspective, especially with energy and some of the other sectors and and trades that we have on. But I think we are going to roll over and see some more blood in the streets. We've got jobless claims coming out tomorrow morning. That's a 7.30 a.m. Central. I think the expected jobless claims is right around a million is what I saw. Now, that's an interesting thing, and one of the reasons we don't trade news is because you never know how the market's going to react to data points or news. There's a couple ways to look at this. One, if it comes in with less jobless claims, the market could see that as positive and go up. But at the same time, I don't know that we've had time to really evaluate how many jobless claims will be coming in. Right. So anyway, we'll, we'll see what happens. But I, I think that, you know, we could get another little pop if jobless claims numbers come in lower than expected. But I still think there's not enough time to really evaluate the amount of layoffs and people out of jobs. And, you know, I've heard of a lot of situations where, you know, people aren't necessarily getting laid off or fired yet, but they're getting extreme salary reductions in case, some cases 50% or more of salary reductions so there's that then the other thing is you know today is March 25th the end of the quarter is coming up right March 31st is the end of the quarter well what starts after the end of each quarter that's right earnings announcements and so it'll be very interesting over these next few weeks to see these earnings announcements start to come out and so you know, I, I just think there's going to be some very serious, disappointing things that come out and maybe not serious numbers as far as actual revenues yet. But if not just revenue numbers, definitely very leery projections, which is also going to affect the price of, of those stocks making those earnings announcements. So that is my take. We will see what happens. Let's see a couple of the things that are going on in the market. Uh, oil up over three and a half percent. Gold down about a percent, bonds down about three quarters of a percent. So some interesting, interesting movement. You know, we talked about the other day, the S&P was up big, but volatility was still up. Same thing today. You know, the S&P is up four, almost four and a half percent. But look at VIX futures. VIX futures are up over three percent. You know, so that kind of tells me one of two things. Either the backwardation is starting to go a little bit back towards the contango, a typical contango situation, which is basically where the shorter term VIX futures are priced lower 
than the long-term VIX futures. And let me just, let me go to that to kind of explain it. It's easier when you can have a little bit of a visual. But right now, we are in what's called backwardation. So if you see VIX here, and this is the active month with 21 days, you can see that they are, VIX futures are trading at about, let's call it 49 and a half, right? And so if we go down the line, what you'll see is that these further dated VIX options are getting lower. So they're saying, okay, there's less risk in the future because the VIX futures are trading lower the further out in time you go. Well, in a normal, quote unquote, normal market, you know, typically what you're going to see is the short term are less and the further dated options on VIX are trading higher. Okay, so that's called contango. We're in contango usually about 80% of the time, but right now we're in what's called backwardation uh, because there is less fear or less uncertainty out in the future because we assume we're gonna kind of get through this and things are gonna get back to normal eventually, right? So this market up and VIX up could be a situation where we are getting back to normalcy. That would be the theory if you think that we're out of the woods. My theory is that the VIX is higher because there's still a lot of uncertainty and the VIX, the volatility, the hedgers, the, you know, the, the people who are hedging, they are not buying this rally. Okay. I'm not buying this rally. I, I don't, I just don't, I don't think it's going to continue. I think, you know, we may see a little bit more of a rally and then I think we are going to roll over and die. All right. So that's, that's that. Let's look at some of the other stocks. Okay, so part of the part of the bailout also included airlines. I've been talking about Boeing a little bit. Now I booked a massive profit on Boeing today, but you know I nibbled here, got out the next day, booked a nice profit. I uh, got in some here, got in some here, and then held it for a few days, and then boom, yesterday big update, and then boom, big update today, and I exited for a massive profit, and I was just selling puts, buying calls. I was buying calls and then financing those by by selling some puts. And so it's kind of on a ratio. But the bottom line is, you know, sometimes you get lucky. So, you know, it's not like I knew anything, but I did anticipate a bailout. And Boeing is one of, maybe one of two, I, I don't even know, carriers who manufacture airplanes. So, you know, nobody else is going to do it. So they're going to be taken care of. You know, you look at some of these other major airlines like Delta, Delta's at big today, almost 20% on the news of that bailout. So, you know, this was this was kind of anticipated in my mind. We've been talking about it for a little while. So hopefully some of you all capitalized on that as well. If we look at some of the other stocks, I mean, a lot of green, obviously, on the screen with the S&P, with the markets up as big as they are, but just kind of going down the line. But even like, you know, I mean, this is one that I, this is one that I want to short. In fact, I shorted a little bit today, and I'm going to probably send out an alert for our alerts portfolio to short some more, and that's Win Casinos. I just, I, I don't think, A, I, I just don't think, I don't think it has legs. I think a situation like this, people are going to be pretty nervous to be gathering at places like casinos, where A, you've got to spend discretionary dollars that a lot of people aren't going to have anymore, and B, you know, gathering of people where everybody's kind of touching chips and, you know, spreading viruses and things like that, so... Win is at the top of my list to to look for a another downside reaction to. So I think that is all I got. Yeah, look for the jobless claims tomorrow, 7.30 a.m. Central. And good luck, everybody. Stay small, stay mechanical, and live to trade another day. Everybody have a great evening. Talk to you tomorrow.